baptism is. Baptism is done for the forgiveness of sins, Acts 2.38. Baptism is done to save us, 1 Peter 3.21, Acts 2.40, Mark 16.16. Baptism is done to wash away our sins, Acts 22.16. Baptism is done to be reborn to new life, John 3.5, Romans 6, 3 through 6. Baptism is done to clothe ourselves with Christ, Galatians 3, 26 and 27. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. First Samuel chapter 2. Praise. I'm going to cut right into the narrative down and through the text, the chapter verse 17, 18, and 19, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 17, 18, and 19. What? But if God did not have a plan for your life, the enemy would have left you alone a long time ago. But the reason why you may have been going through what you've had to go through is because God has a great plan for your life and the enemy is afraid of that. But it doesn't matter what you may have done last summer or last week. Tonight can be a brand new beginning. And if you're here and you've not yet given your heart to Jesus and repented of your sins, and been baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of those sins, you can do it tonight. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now that's the new birth. Hey. But we can all leave here on fire for God. Yeah, that's right. Thank you to the youth leader of this section. Thank you to all the leadership team involved in this uh, youth leadership section to to pastor linder his sweet wife and family to the leadership team of this church to all the wonderful members who are here supporting all the youth there's a few of here that are not in the youth category and i finally get to prove to the wonderful people of heaven view that i've got a wife The first lady of Martin Buster Ministries. I'll say it to you like this. Her name is Marilyn. Je t'aime ma chérie Marilyn. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Hmm. First Samuel chapter 2 verse 17. Wherefore the sin of the young men was very great before the Lord. This, these are the sons of Eli. For men abhorred the offering of the Lord. Verse 18, but Samuel ministered before the Lord, being a child, girded with a linen ephod. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat and brought it to him from year to year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. But the coat didn't get littler and littler and smaller and smaller. We're going to deal with that in just a moment. Lord Jesus, Hallelujah. let this moment not be lost on us. Who knows who is sitting here? Who knows who's going to receive the word of the Lord? And going to do great things for God in this hour. Would you lay your Bible down and give the Lord about a 30-second thunderous round of applause? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His name together. Praise God. Praise God. 
You may be seated. For the next 30 minutes, I'm going to ask for your absolute undivided attention. And so there was a woman named Hannah who was barren. And she had this passion for a child. Hannah just happens to mean grace. Israel was going through a time of transition. Eli's eyes had grown dim. He was a seer. But not only was his natural eyesight growing dim, there were things that were going on right under his nose. And he either was in denial or just was not able to see it. Without a vision we perish. I understand what that really implies. But what we need in this hour, we need seers. The sons of Issachar who understand the seasons and the times. And through her travail and passion, she said, oh God, if you'll give me a son, I'll give him to you. It was time for a new era to be birthed in Israel. And the first prophet was born. His name, Samuel. Not trafficking in the hyperbole, but I have come to this youth rally to pour my heart and soul into these 30 minutes and tell you that what we need in 2016 is a birth of the prophetic. No, I'm not implying that everyone under the sound of my voice, because I'm here and because I'm preaching, you're going to receive some gift of the Spirit. Gifts of the Spirit are only given by God. No man, no woman can give you a gift. If you really want my handkerchief when I'm through, you're welcome to it. But it's going to need the washing machine, really. But please never think that just because you acquired someone's handkerchief, you've acquired more than three decades of preaching and trial and error and so forth. No, there's, there is a price to be paid. But what I am saying is that we will have people that will leave this building who will finish high school and they will go on to further education and we will have perhaps some prophets and evangelists and pastors and those who will be full time in the ministry but, but then again we'll have physicians yeah, yeah. attorneys yeah. engineers yeah. elected officials yeah. Yeah. blue collar white collar yeah. not only filled with the Holy Ghost but lit of the Holy Ghost yeah. Yeah. Mr. Salman, I know this crowd, they might get loud. If they get loud, don't turn them down. You may have to turn me up because this is going to be intense. We are not going to build to a crescendo. We're going to hit the road running right now. So we might want to get that volume just tweaked a little. And thank you so much for doing a great job. It is my passion at this juncture in my ministry to move into the ministry of convergence and to impart whatever things God may have given me because way back in the day in eastern Canada, there was a white-haired, big-eared young boy, the youngest of a family of 19, who was a square your pig. He was an outlier. He just really couldn't fit in. He was the world's biggest nerd, but God talked to me, and I would fast and I would pray. <laughs> Study that Bible. I poured heart and soul into it, and I would say, God, please use me, and then it happened. My eldest sibling, a man of God, looked at me one day, and he said, the hand of God is upon your life. It gave me identity. It gave me affirmation. I was never the same. I said, I will pursue this. I will wear that prayer room out, but I'm going to know God. We're going to do this in 30 minutes, so we're going to have to go quickly through this narrative. And so, and so mama keeps her word. This fine young boy, after he is weaned, she brings him to the house of God. Listen to what she tells Elkanah. I will leave him there forever. 
Now we don't mean to hold you hostage and barricade you in the heaven view facility forever. But we want you to be in his presence forever. I pray that you'll have a passion like the psalmist. One thing have I desired of the Lord and that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the king to inquire in his presence. I was glad when they said unto me let us go into the house of the Lord. I want to move you from going to church to becoming the church. I don't want you to have an alter ego. I want you to be true blue through and through. I want you to be out there what you are in here. If God's going to use you in here, he can use you out there. Light shines in darkness, not in light. She brought the baby boy to the house of God and said, Eli, he belongs to God. And oh, what a dark time in that temple. Those boys were desecrating the house of God. Hedonism reigned. And I would not want to bring my child into that kind of an atmosphere. But then again, that's kind of where we're at in 2016. Right is wrong and... There doesn't seem to be any right anymore, and things are no longer in terms of just black and white. They are no, I mean, there is so much ambiguity, and we live in, in, in an ambivalent society, and here we are arguing over who should get to go to which bathroom. The world is messing with your mind. We are not bigots and bullies. We believe the blood of Jesus can set anyone free. I want to be bold. If you're having an addiction issue, Jesus can set you free. And if something is messing with your mind and you're being tempted by disgusting things that repulse you, we're not going to throw you out and marginalize you. We're here on the journey to salvage you because you're all worth it. Every one of you are valuable to God. Spirits of the age are vying for your soul. And in the middle of this terrible hedonistic atmosphere, little Samuel, who could have joined with the sons of Eli and learned their evil practices and fallen into that abyss of darkness, said, no, I make a decision right now to minister to the Lord. You made a decision to be here tonight. Now, it's all right if you're here and you spot someone of the other gender that looks all right. There's nothing wrong with a man going, whoa, man, just keep it in check. Don't let it run away. There will be a time for everything to come together. We're not going to deny you the way God wired you. I'm still on your side. I'll never forget. Oh, goodness, I don't want to take too long. But there's an anointing here. Way back in the day when Anthony and Mickey Mangan came all the way to New Brunswick, Canada to do the youth camp and senior camp. And the world's biggest nerd, I finally turned 13. I got to go. Only thing is, I wasn't prepared. I couldn't match clothes. I mean, I'm the youngest of 19. No twins, no adoptions, one at a time. And th there was nothing to, I mean, you, you wore hand-me-downs? No, they were wore slap out by the time they got to me. But I said, I'm going to senior camp. I'm going to senior camp. Yeah, I am. And so I went into Lloyd's part of the bedroom because my next uh, sibling, uh, sibling to me, Lloyd, he was cool. He could dress always, always, always dress. And, and I, I knew he had some, some brown vinyl dress boots. <laughs> They had a, I am not exaggerating, they had a three inch rubber heel. And I just kind of took them over to my part of the bedroom and put them in my little duffel bag. 
and, and, and then I, I went over to Eugene's part of the bedroom and I got his Brew 33 cologne. I'm serious. It's a heart attack. I, I put it in there. And then I was going to have to be properly groomed. So I went over to the girl's bedroom and I got one of those combs with that many teeth and a tail for curling hair about that long. And I stuck it in there. And my mother made me a homemade green soup. And I showed up on the campground, went into that dormitory. It came service time, and I think I showered. Well, I was 10 years of age before we got indoor plumbing. I'm just being honest. I think that I showered, and, 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 and I slicked that hair back, and, and I slathered on that Brute 33, and I slipped into that homemade green suit, and then I somehow got into those three-inch heels, brown vinyl boots, and I looked like Kiss Destroyer, and I, and I walked out, and that, that comb was in my back pocket, and it got caught me under my suit coat, and there was about that much of that tail of that comb sticking out. No, I didn't get engaged that year. <laughs> but I got an anointing of the Holy Ghost upon my life. But Samuel ministered before the Lord being a child girded with the linen ephod. Young man right there, that bow tie, I like that. That's really cool, GQ. Would you mind taking off your suit coat for a second and just laying it beside you? No, keep the deck tie on. Oh, that's, that's, that looks cool too. You're so cool, you look cool with it tied and not tied. Just sit right there. <laughs> Eli! Saw the hand of God upon that boy. Saw the anointing of God upon that boy. He knew there was something special. God give us pastors and evangelists and leaders of the church. Spiritual insight to detect potential. Pastor, you don't know who might be in your youth group right now. You might. They might be the world's biggest nerd. They might be in some back bedroom upstairs in the house, uh, singing in the mirror, playing the air guitar, or preaching, but they're there. Yeah. And we have got to become spiritual geologists yeah. Yeah. and dig through the dirt and find them. What I want to do in 2016 and from here on out, I want to move into the ministry of impartation. What's your first name? Devin. Stand up, Devin. Stand right there. And Eli, put a linen ephod on Samuel. So Devin's going to become you. and I'm going to pray for you vicariously. Lord, let this be symbolic. I pray tonight, Lord Jesus. I can't lay hands on every young man and young woman in this church. But everyone that's hungry, I pray that they'll receive an anointing. Devin's not too young. No one here is too young. We need everyone to feel it. T.W. Barnes told me 30 plus years ago, Brother Bustard, I had a vision in the end time of a group of young people coming onto the horizon. They were tens of thousands in number and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were anointed and they were gifted with the gifts of the Spirit and the fivefold ministry. I have come to call you out. I have come to call you up and say, you're anointed. You've got the favor of God upon you. Samuel, I'm old. I'm not long for this life. I wanted so much for my boys to wear this. But I couldn't pass it on to them. 
Maybe they thought they could just act any old way at all. And because of nepotism, they were going to end up with it anyhow. Because daddy going to give it to me. But promotion doesn't come from the left or the right. God sets up and God takes down. So Samuel, I recognize the anointing of God upon your life. But whatever you do, understand that this is a priestly anointing. Before I transition, would you stretch your hands to the air? Say, Jesus, do something to me. Now say, Jesus, do something through me. Say, use me. I will remember you in the days of my youth. Thank you, Devin. Have a seat. You can, you can keep it for now. But ladies and gentlemen, we ought to probably at least consider that maybe God knows how to run a church. We ought, to just, we ought to just act like perhaps God knows how to do it. I mean, he did a great job with the universe. Yeah, he sure did. The sun with its luminosity, with its circumference, with its distance from the earth, a little bit further away we would freeze, a little bit closer we would burn up. The galaxies, and, and, and our galaxy has 100 million stars, and that's just the Milky Way. That's just, that's just the beginning of what's out there, and he just seems to know what he's doing. The way the tides and the moon work in unison. I could go on and on with examples stacked on top of example. So we probably should understand that God probably knows how to run a church. And he's a God of balance. And we can go through the Old Testament with the Ark of the Covenant and how it was made and everything and everything that was in it. We can go through uh, everything with the temple, the outer court, the inner court, the holy place, the most holy place, and even the curtains with the loops and they had so many loops on it. I mean, and the pomegranates and the golden. There's so much typology in that Old Testament that explains the New Testament. The old complain, the new contain, the new explain, the old conceal, the new reveal, so forth and so on. But he. He, there's nine beatitudes. There's nine gifts of the Spirit. There's nine fruit of the Spirit. And in that list in 1 Corinthians 12 of gifts of the Spirit, there's the gift of faith that can resurrect the dead. That's faith that is unstoppable. But over in Galatians 5, with the fruit of the Spirit, he, he says that faith is a fruit. Why in the world would Paul the Apostle say faith is a gift of the Spirit and faith is a fruit? And this is the transition. Devin, that right there is an ephod. Oh, I'm sorry. And a prophet of the Lord says, you're anointed. Brother Dan, can I have your coat, please? But remember, Devin, balance is the key word in the English language. Balance is what stops chaos in the cosmos and keeps everything in harmony. You see, here's the deal. If I get out of balance, for example, if a wheel is out of alignment, if I don't get that change, I'm going to need a new wheel. And if a marriage gets out of balance, it's going to have a divorce. If a church gets out of balance, it's going to have a split. See, one thing I strive for is balance in the ministry. So Eli gave him the linen ephod. But his mama never forgot about him. And uh, she didn't go to Fifth of Saks or Saks Fifth Avenue. Or she didn't go to Neiman Marcus. She, you know, she didn't get a Zenia top of the line. She sat at home and she got some fabric and thread and needle. And she began to put something together for him. Now, it wouldn't be a fashion statement. And that's what we have to be careful about the ministry. Because we put it on display. Cool. And then internet and sometimes other mediums to broadcast it. And it's really cool. 
But that's not what it's supposed to be. So his mama made him a coat. And it was a little coat. And this is going to be a little bit bigger than mine probably, Devin. But come here, Devin. Now, that has a purpose, that coat. That's anointing. That speaks of spiritual enterprise. But mama has been thinking about you, Devin. Now, you're not going to come to the sectional youth rally and girls say, look at Devin. Look at that coat. <laughs> but every stitch has been sewn with the love of a mother. Yeah. And mother put a coat on him. Right. Always esteem the ephod. And be humble and say, I don't deserve this. I'm the least of the least. And God said, I'm going to anoint you. But Devin, there's a purpose in this. But you can't survive in certain elements in the atmosphere through different seasons with just this. Anyone who thinks that it's an ephod, it's linen, not thick. I, I'm just going to wear it. Ministers that do that burn out. Young people that do that burn out. You see, this is what Eli gave you, Samuel. And this is what Mama gave you, a coat. Mama represents the church. The church is what provides a covering for you. Always be undercover. Don't become vulnerable. Because if you do, if you neglect that, this isn't going to do you any good. What are you talking about? I'm talking about this. I have always worn an ephod ever since God anointed me. But I always accept the covering of the church. And even in full-time ministry, I stay undercover because I always put my ministry under a ministry. Because the gifts of the Spirit don't offer, operate in a woman or a man. They operate in the body. I'm just part of the body. Can I talk about this covering just a little bit? Because I stay covered. Pastor Anthony Mangan is my pastor. My president, my, my, my spiritual, my, my leader in my area is, is, is Superintendent Kevin Cox. The apostle in my life is Bishop T.F. Tenney. These men at any time can ask any question and look into any area of my life that they may choose to do so. And I've given them carte blanche. Young man, young lady, I pray that God would put an ephod upon you before you walk out that door. But I pray that you would stay covered with the church and stay close to the church. Get to know your pastor even better. Develop an even stronger relationship with your youth leader. Because there's a lot of junk on that internet that are going to try to mess with you. This world is going to try to take it off of you. Would you stand with me all over the house? And we as the church, we, we've got a responsibility in this as well. I'll demonstrate. Devin, can I have your coat for a second? That, is that your coat? That's not mine, is it? Pastor Dan, would you just take another step forward? See, here's the problem. See, if, if the church doesn't stay current, if the church doesn't stay on its toes, you know, what's very sad is I've evangelized for more than 30 years, and I don't mean to disparage any church. I would never want to do that. But I've been to churches back in the day that had a thriving youth group. But the leadership transitioned. 
Their children grew up, went on their way. The focus shifted. And I thought, oh, wow. See, the coat that she made for Samuel the year before, not going to work this year. Every year she made the journey. Every year she stitched together a new coat. See, what we're trying to do is Well, that was the way we did it back. And I'm not talking about the message. I'm talking about some methods. That's how it was back in our day. Don't know if I even want to send my kid to that youth rally. That music's different back in my day. Yeah, but I got news for you. I was back in your day, some of your days. And way back in the day, if you didn't have a grand piano, but you had to spin it, that's the way it had to be. There was controversy when we got away from the upright or the grand and went to that. Roland, give me a break. <laughs> give me a break. I don't know what's going to happen next. They'll probably stop using India paper and put the Bible on some kind of an ungodly electric device. <laughs> yeah, but that's a whole lot easier to move than those grand pianos and those uprights. Man, a lot of men strained their lower back dealing with those upright pianos, I'll tell you right now. You see, here's the deal. If you look at the old keyboard, well, it's still the keyboard now, but yeah, modern keyboard, the left-hand sequence is Q-W-E-R-T. Now, people thought that that is something to do with the brain, and somebody uh, had the, was savvy enough to understand that because of the chemistry of the brain, if you have Q-W-E-R-T, you can, you can type lightning fast. No, it was the opposite, because those old typewriters, the keys would stick. And people were always having to pull them apart, and they had to slow them down. So they said QWERT. So it wasn't for efficiency. It was to slow things down so they wouldn't get stuck. Church, we, we, we can't be doing that to our youth. Because Dan, the man's going to be shivering and shaking in the night. He even could become vulnerable to the atmosphere and the elements. Because we didn't keep up with the growth of our youth. But don't worry, Samuel. Because mom said this year He's a 46 tall. <laughs> Am I in the ballpark? I'm only good in the spirit. <laughs> I'll prove it to you. It's so good to be here with all five foot ten of my brother right here. <laughs> so I pray that we, in the leadership of the church, would be more diligent to cover. And I pray that you will come down here right now and seek two things. Say, God, I'd sure love to be, I'd sure love to be dressed in that linen ephod. I want to be used of God in 2016. Brother Buster talked about a prophetic generation. That's right. I, I believe it with all of my heart because Joel prophesied it and, 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 and Peter on the day of Pentecost said, this is that. Yeah. So I am telling you that before Jesus Christ returns, there's going to be a prophetic generation. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Yeah, 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 that's right. 
I have come to speak a word over you that God wants to renew you and refill you and restore you in the Holy Ghost. And I believe that God wants to turn that horn of oil above your head and let that oil come all the way down from your head to your toe. I like to see you get so drunk in the Holy Ghost that you couldn't go spend that five dollars at McDonald's. That you were so drunk in the Holy Ghost that all the way back on the van you could only speak two or three words in your English dialect. I like to see God come upon you with his glory so heavily that your knees would buckle under the weight of the glory of God. I like to see God awaken a passion in you to fast and to pray and to dedicate your life and your future to God Almighty. But I'm also going to ask that when you come down here, you'll say, oh God, please cover me. I want to be held accountable. I want to walk in submission to the spirit of God and those who love my soul. That's been more than 30 minutes. Would you leave and come down here right now? Baptism, then what? Baptism is a burial in water for accountable beings into the remission of sins, for salvation to get into Christ, to become a new creature, to get into the one body. Then, walk in the new life, study and grow, become a servant of righteousness, keep self pure, be an example, have faith in God, follow Jesus, put first things first, Resist temptation, be faithful, and be fruitful.